Hi everyone, in the previous series I connected key cars engine to the previous gearbox and put a starter on this tandem. In this part I'll install this engine in the buggy, weave the wiring to it and we'll try to drive. Now I'll show step by step how I integrated this assembly into the vehicle. First I moved the buggy under the engine and tried it in the new engine area. It turned out that the carburetor abutted into the rack and I had to cut off it. I think that after installation, I'll weld it bypass the carburetor. I didn't change the gearbox fastening and it remained on its place. Then I fastened the drives to adjust the engine position horizontally. That was made in order not to break the CV joint during the suspension work when it would contract on the helix. Approximately understanding the engine position, I moved to the front supports. We need to make brackets for them that will be welded on the frame. I'll make them from a steel strip as well as all levers brackets in the buggy. I made some notchings for convenient strip bending of a strip in a U-shape. I welded pipe to them and fastened them to the engine cushions. After some adjustment and small backfit, I welded them to the buggy frame. I tested all possible engine deviations during its work, the engine is reliably fixed and the result suited me. As it turned out I've hurried and cut off a pipe early, after the front support's installation the carburetor was at sufficient distance from the frame, we needed to return a piece of pipe on its place. Earlier the working clutch cylinder was fastened to the adapter plate, now I made a separate fastening on the box ledge for it. The next element which needs to be installed is a cooling radiator, of course it's in a bad state, but it doesn't seep so there's no need in its replacement. The only suitable place for it is over the box under the passenger's steps. I'll fix it as it was fastened in the car through the rubber spacers. For this purpose I cut out fastenings from the pipe for them. After fitting I welded them to the frame. From the front the radiator will be kept on the brackets that will be welded to the top step. I won't connect a radiator by branch pipes yet and will move to power supply. Installed the generator on its place and pulled a wedge-shaped belt. I began searching the location of the accumulator. At first I wanted to install the battery in the front part of the buggy, but all the place was occupied by cylinders and brake lines. The only place I found was over the engine, but there would also pass the radiator branch pipes and it'd be a hinder. For this reason I decided to refuse the big accumulator and took a smaller 140 amperes less. It will just get in between the engine and a seat. I welded a support in the form of a frame for it and welded it to the frame. Further I changed an outtake manifold. I cut it a bit and welded in a 50mm pipe at the exit. After it there will be a vibration compensator of the exhaust system, it won't let the engine vibrations to be transferred to the muffler and its joints. The flange will be welded on the coupling which I also drilled until 50mm. I'll leave the same muffler as on the buggy but with an internal pipe modification under the dimension of 50 mm. During the fitting I put everything on tacks, removed, welded all together and finally installed the muffler on its place. I finished everything with the muffler and moved to the filter installation. The filtering element in the system will be a filter of zero resistance. It's the only option as another one just won't get because of close carburetor arrangement to the frame. I saturated it with a special liquid and installed on the carburetor, it fitted perfectly. Now we can move to the radiator branch pipes. I didn't find any armored hoses of necessary diameter to lengthen sail and used a standard set of branch pipes from the key car. I made a long line from two hoses using the connector of a pipe and collars.
The hoses are placed under an inclination, so I think there won't be any air in them. The commutator, the coil and the ignition relay, I hid in the box, so far I connected everything on twists to check the engine running. For now the plastic bottle will serve as the gasoline tank. I pumped up fuel and tried to start the engine. The engine refused to start and I decided to check the spark plugs in the spark. They were slightly smoked but the spark appeared. I tried to start again but no success. I decided to look everything over until the problem detection. I began with the carburetor, decided to clean it and to change all consumables. I assembled the carburetor and tried again. Everything remained the same. Then I replaced the Hall Effect transducer with the new one and the engine was started. Not steadily but nevertheless still a result. For a further check we need to fill in the antifreeze in the cooling system in order not to warm up the engine accidentally. After that I also adjusted the carburetor and the engine began to work more purely. But after the night it began to work unstable again and even to spit out gasoline from the carburetor. And there I got it. During the engine removal I bent the solenoid activated valve which was responsible for the fuel supply. This valve wasn't connected and I thought that it was a cap. The former owner bit off a needle and twisted it back. It is rather widespread practice. But during unscrewing of the valve I noticed that the needle was on its place. It means the car worked at idle speed with the blocked fuel supply. At that time I didn't attach much significance to it and just put a cap instead of it, and only then I understood that this carburetor was unusual and rigidly modified. I bought the new carburetor and compared it with an old one. The air choke of the launcher in the new one was densely closed, on the old one was unbent with a screwdriver. The butterfly valves of both cameras on the new carburetor were densely closed, on the old one were slightly open for a couple of millimeters. It is unclear how the former owners could adjust it like that and made the car work truly with interruptions. I installed the new carburetor and tried to start the engine. The engine started at once, I adjusted the carburetor and left everything as it was. I noticed that the radiator was cold and a branch pipe after the thermostat was too. I decided not to change the thermostat and just removed it from the system. I replaced it with the coupling with a nipple under the expansion tank. Put the temperature indicating system from another car and the thermal fan sensor switching on from it too. When the temperature reached plus minus 90 degrees centigrade the fan was switched on and cooled the system. The gasoline tank I took from the previous engine, I also replaced a gasoline pump with more reliable. Installed a motor board as the engine had antifreeze and it'd be not good if the branch pipe would depart and scald the driver. I double checked everything, filled in the gasoline and went for tests. I started the engine and allowed it to get warmed up till the operating temperature. After that the engine stalled and ceased to be started. First I checked the spark plugs, they were in the trailer in normal state. Further I checked a spark on light, the camera doesn't see it, but the spark was normal. I twirled the plugs on their place and tried to start again. The engine was started, got warm a little and began to work steadily again. But after getting warmed up till the operating temperature again stalled. 
In such field conditions I uncovered the carburetor to check jets and fuel level, everything was alright as the carburetor was new. After cooling down the engine got started again and after getting warmed began to sneeze in the carburetor. There can be many reasons such as electronics or gasoline pump though it was new. Even after purchase I noticed that the timer was turned and the ignition was set early. But it worked at such position earlier and during the work in a workshop everything also worked well. Something happened in the engine that has worked a little and the idle speed ceased to stall. The problem was gone and I prepared for a ride but the engine stalled again. As ill luck there came a wind and the rain poured, I needed to leave urgently as the dirt roads quickly turn into the swamp thus there'll be no much chance to go out with the trailer. After all the old mechanism quite often let you down, but all the same I won't give up and will fix the problem and release one more small video with the test drive. And for now thanks everyone for your attention and support. Put your thumbs up and see you in the following video.